You know the vibes. Welcome back to another episode of the Hoop Genius Podcast, brought to you by NBA 2K24. It's myself, Momotsi, and alongside me, as always, is the three-time NBA champion, Mr. BJ Armstrong. But this week's episode, today's episode, should I say, because we knocked five of them out a week, is a little bit different. Last week, BJ and I had a conversation on the podcast, which was so interesting, I had to take it out of that podcast because I felt like it de deserved its own episode. So I'm going to share that with you guys today, and I would love to hear your thoughts. So get at me on social media, at Hoop Genius on Twitter, Instagram, or join the Discord. The Discord is a great place to join a real basketball community with other basketball fans who talk NBA at all hours of the day. So get involved. The link's are in the description. But enjoy this conversation where BJ and I discussed who truly is the greatest scorer of all time. And I promise you, BJ's answer is going to absolutely shock you because I did not expect what he said to come out of his mouth. Kevin Durant, ice cold. I think the more active he is on Twitter, because he's been arguing with fans all day yesterday and today, uh, it just elevates his performance. About, about what? What is he arguing about? About what? It, about his legacy. Every day it's about him joining Golden what, State. What, what, yeah, what's his legacy? What? What is I his legacy? I, Wait, tell me what's his legacy. I, I don't understand. So I don't understand... I just watch now. I don't. What, what's his I, legacy? I don't know. I don't. Some people like, say he's. You, some people yeah. say he's the greatest scorer of all time. Other people say he could never win, so he ran off to Golden State. How do you, State. How do you say like, he's the greatest scorer? I'm of all like, time? like, if he was the greatest scorer of all time, surely he'd have the most points, or average the most points, or win the most championships, or something. I mean, I how think, do you make that argument though? Like in today's world, because they say he's argument? a seven footer who can pull up and shoot the three, and da 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 da. da. And my thing is, if you think that, then. You're going to have a new great score of all time in Wemby, and you're going to have a new great score of all time in five years and 10 years and 20 years. I don't think he's the greatest scorer of all time. No, I don't. Um, is he an extremely skilled player, extremely talented scorer? Yes. Um, is he one of the top 20 players to ever play basketball? Yep. But uh, who is the, who is Mo in the greatest scorer of all time? In my opinion. Why? Well, that's the only opinion, you, unless you got another opinion. You, you, <laughs> You 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 I got mean, multiple. Uh, there's different multiple... ways. There's different ways of looking at it because I could say Kareem well, because he yeah, has the well, unstoppable. Well, I'm move. asking. I'm asking you. I'm asking you. I, okay. I don't, I'm just asking I'm, you. I'm, and I'm how explaining you look my thought it. process through this, right? Oh, okay. So right, I'm, okay. I, I might say Kareem because he's got the unguardable move. No one else got move that's unguardable like that. However, the way I look at these kind of all time questions, if you need a bucket and your life is on the line, and you you got to have one player go out and get you a bucket. I'm taking Michael Jordan because Michael okay, Jordan's so, an averaging 30 plus so, in an era where guys didn't average 30 plus. Now so with who, the amount who, of possession of the pace, it's average. It's okay to average. So I'm saying Michael Jordan is the greatest scorer of all time. Yes. Okay. Who do you think is the greatest scorer of all time? Um. You know, it's, a, it's a complex question. And the reason it's complex for me is because of the technical way that, unfortunately, that I had to see the game, right? It, it's, it's hard for me to just watch a game and watch a guy score, right? You know, like, and, you know, Kevin Durant, for instance, because we were talking about him. Kevin Durant shoots the three. Kevin Durant... It's a seven footer, and people say, Oh, he's the greatest scorer. Okay, that's all right. But you haven't shared with me any reason or logic to explain to me why you view that as okay, guy shoots a three <laughs> and he's seven foot. Okay, all right. Can you expand? All right. You just, I just heard you say Kareem had an unstoppable shot. Believe it or not, you know, guys were shooting hook shots. Not like you him, know. though. Okay. Okay. Guys were shooting hook shots. What made Kareem, technically, is he was one of, if probably the premier guy that had a counter to a move. He had a go-to move. Like, when you practice, you practice to develop your game. OK, you, you a, 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 again, I, I am talking from a professional viewpoint. I'm not talking mm -hmm. about mm -hmm. just work it out. I'm talking. All right. What's your game? Kareem had a game. He had a game 
he had a move where he could actually create a shot. Creating a shot is one of the first principles of what we would term determine a sound offense, right? Why is creating a shot? Because that allows you as a team to get an offensive rebound. That's one of the principles. You want to create penetration. You want to penetrate the defense. So getting up a shot in a, in, at any given moment is actually one of the principles of a sound offense. Well, Kareem, by the way, was one of the first that had a move that he could create a shot. But what made it so effective was he had a counter to that. Great scores have counters to everything that you do. One of the greatest scores that I've ever seen in my life was a guy by the name of George Gergen, who, by the way, Kevin Durant, Kevin Durant acknowledged mm -hmm. it's one of the guys that he patterned his game after. Mm -hmm. And George Gerben was one of the first guys who explained scoring to me. He said, quote, quote, I have a shot for every occasion. <laughs> now, I thought that then when I first heard it as, as, a, as a young kid in Detroit, Michigan, he happened to be from Detroit, was one of the most beautiful things I've ever heard. As I went up through the ranks, collegiately, professionally, when you see guys who have a counter for everything that you do or they'll see, that to me is what makes an amazing score. You have to have a counter. Now, you ask me, and I'm saying this to say the following. Wilt Chamberlain, if you just go by numbers, he's a great scorer of all times. Statistically. He, he, he just he was a great scorer, right? The guy averaged 50, 30 rebounds a night. And he played, by the way, in every minute of every game plus the overtime for a full season. The guy averaged over a minute. I mean, over he averaged points per minute. <laughs> the guy averaged over 50. It's only 48 minutes in the game. Okay? He did that for a whole season and played in every minute plus the overtime. Okay? Mm -hmm. That's what he did. However, when you look at the sophistication of the game, defensively, because of travel, because of tape, and technology and all of these things, he didn't have to face the level of sophistication that players today had to face as far as defensive schemes, so forth and so on, because you didn't have the ability to look Scout at the game the opponents. And, and, and do all of the stuff that you had to do. Okay? That's just a fact. I'm not taking away anything. Then suddenly you had equipment. He had sneakers, the floors in which they played on, how they travel, diet, training. You had to take that into account. Then suddenly someone got the idea that actually we can start playing screen role and doing things with the smaller players because traditionally George, Mike, and the bigger players dominated the way we play and the style of play. Mm -hmm. Then what was fascinating is we might be able to play with a wing player in that era, which currently <laughs> is still making an impact in even in the in today's game, which you guys call the modern era, as if, if Elgin Baylor and these guys didn't really exist, right? These guys, Dr. J and these guys were doing, but Connie Hawkins and all these guys. But that's another story. Okay. Seven footers. There was a guy, Ralph Sampson, who was like seven three, seven four. Believe it or not, this guy was shooting on the perimeter. And if you were, if Kevin Durant was a seven footer in our era, Kevin Durant would have been a center. They would have said, "Hey, you're seven footer. Hey, son, you got to beef up." <laughs> 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 okay, because that's the way the game was taught. Now the game has expanded and we have what's called stretch four, stretch five. So da, da, da. now when I look at a score, the thing I'm, I'm trying to 
incorporate into this is going, okay, I see all of these, I see all of these eras, 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, 2000, and say, which guy really fits into and could have played in any of those eras? When I say play, they all could have played in the era. But who could have played and adapted to these styles where they'll probably be, like for instance, I think if Jordan played in the 60s, I don't think he would be the Jordan that we saw in the 90s. Okay. Why? Because his game was way too advanced. He would have been like, he was already like an alien and even in the 90s, but really in the 60s, I don't see people going, hey, let's let this guy play isolation basketball and, yeah. and jump through the air. I just don't see that happening. Okay. The equipment wasn't there for him to be cutting and playing like that in the converse cons. Okay. One of the players I think would have kind of played in as far as it, and, and what it kind of would have gone even is probably Tim Duncan. Yeah. It's probably the one guy to me that would be the most consistent of so, any so player in, to, as far as if you just took the totality of it. I'm yeah. not, I'm not, because there's really no way to signify who's the greatest score. Well, like, you made me answer. So now I got to ask you who is, yes, in yeah, your opinion, I, I, the greatest score of I all think, time? I think the greatest score would probably be Tim Duncan. Wow. And the reason being is because the game started, the, all of the scores started on the box. Yeah. So that, if Tim really, Duncan was in the NBA today, how much did. do you think he's averaging? Prime Tim Duncan. I, it, 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 Tim Duncan could have easily averaged 30. He just elected not to. He could have easily averaged, because Tim Duncan could play from the box and he could play from the elbows. And and if you watch the game, Mo, in the 40s and the 50s, the bigs were passing from the elbows. Mm -hmm. They were actually, they were running what's called UCLA high cuts. Yep. Okay. And they were passing from the bigs. That's why when we see Jokic now, we go, wow, we marvel because that's how the bigs used to play. They used to play and pass from the elbow and then they could slide down and play from the low post. Tim Duncan could play from the low post. Tim Duncan could play from the elbow, which is the high post. Tim Duncan could also play screen and roll. He could play screen and pop. Tim Duncan if he elected, he could have shot threes. Tim Duncan could have shot. We, we know he was shooting uh, bank shots. So he could play isolation basketball. He could play team basketball. I just think his game was suited to play in any era and to play whatever style it was playing. Like if you take Will Chamberlain right now and you put him in this era, maybe he could shoot threes. You put Shaq, maybe he, but I don't see Shaq suddenly now scoring the way I watch Embiid and Jokic score. Shaq was on the box. Do I think he could? Yeah, Shaq was very skilled. I don't mean, you know. Yeah, I just happen to young Shaq going in transition coast to coast, like yes. It's different. However, however, when the game slows down because it's going to slow down, you still have to be able to do other things. Shaq never had to do the other things because he was so dominant at one thing. Mm -hmm. Do I think he could have? Yes, I do. I really do. But he didn't do Akeem Olajuwon, for instance, like is another player that probably could have figured it out. Could he could have played in the 60s, 70s at, at his size? So I'm just looking at the totality of the game and saying he had, Tim Duncan had a skill set to me that would have been a minimum 25 a game in any era that he played in where some of the other guys I don't know if they would have just because of the style of play at that particular time right I don't know if you would you look at these players today I don't know how many players could play in an era where there was no isolation basketball <laughs> I just, like that was the that's the way they played back then like yeah. both, like and, and different rules with the hand check in and a different defensive three seconds absolutely and so I'm just looking at the totality of saying how the game was played, the physicality of the game. I just think Tim Duncan was probably, I think Tim Duncan is probably the one player that when you talk about who's the greatest, he should be there. I, I think he's one of the most underrated players. Ever. I don't know if he's underrated, because, but because I know he doesn't he get beat, brought up in these conversations. He I never expected you to say this. He beat every great player in his era. He, he beat, beat LeBron, beat uh, Kobe, 
Go be he beat Shaq. He beat every single player in his era. He's won the most games for the length of time of any player in the NBA. He's won as the first option, the second option, the third. He, and he did it on call. Like if you needed him to get 40, he'd go get 40. But he would do it in a way where he could play in the system. He could go outside of the system. He could carry a team. He could he could defend at, at an elite level. He could rim protect. He could you could play through him on the post. You could play through him through screen. I mean, he was just such a, a an amazing basketball player. I mean, the guy. If you ever watch him, if you ever want to watch a player who never made a mistake on the defensive end, just watch him. The he's always in the, He's always in the right place. He always made the right pass. And listen, we all make mistakes, but he was at a, such an elite level that you didn't even see it. Like sometime when you watch him and I would just study him sometime, I would go, there's no way that this guy could be this good. And he does it every single time. There's they no, it, yeah, he, he just, so as a score, do I think he could stop Wilt Chamberlain? No. Do I think he could stop Kareem? No. But do I think he could play against those guys? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. and you, you follow what I'm saying? Yeah. Do I think he could play you against Bill Russell? You compete. Yes. Do I think he could have played against Michael Jordan? Absolutely. Could he have played against Kareem Abdul-Jabbar and with the sky hook? Would he have stopped it? No, he wouldn't have. But let me tell you something. He would have got something accomplished in that game. Yeah. Okay. And I watched him play against Shaq. And I watched him play against LeBron and I watched him play against every great player. KG and he did it. One of the KG, best defenders ever. That was his rival he, through his career. He played and he played in an era where that power forward position was stacked. Mm -hmm. It was Chris Rasheed. Webber, Rasheed Wallace, and Mario Derek was, Coleman. Mario Mario's great Carl, as well. People forget. Uh uh Carl Malone, Charles Bar. He played against them all. And if you ask any of these guys privately, I don't know what they'll say publicly, they'll all say, Hey man. Big fundamental. Everybody mm -hmm. says it, but no one like says it loud. So I think when I just look at a player, and and I take all of this into consideration because Mo, like when I came into the league, I remember how I played when I traveled commercially, and then when I played when we started taking private planes, there was a difference. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. There was a difference. All right. And, and the difference was, is how I was able to recover and play. So if you ask me, listen, if you could go back in time and everyone had the same equipment and all those things, hey, Will Chamberlain and these guys were doing this in converse cons. You had seven footers running around in converse cons, low tops, playing basketball in an NBA game. If I could have given these guys the equipment and the training and all of the things that they had today, it's a different game. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Now I'm just getting technical here. I'm not getting into like who's got the best fadeaway, who's got all of that. So if you would have given these guys the same resources, the 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 Rick Berries and the Larry Burrs that these players have today, trainers and all of Crazy. that. It's and, a different and that's what game. people forget when they talk about all time. They're yeah, like, oh, yeah, yeah, these yeah. guys couldn't play in this era. And I'm like, well, if they played in this era, their whole life would have been different because yeah, they would have been mean, brought up, you know, kids nowadays are brought up watching NBA highlights on their iPad from you know, when they're these five guys years like, old. Like Oscar Robertson and these guys, Elgin Baylor. It's some, it's a it's some amazing Connie Hawkins. This was some amazing players. Dr. J. It's an incredible players. But when I just look at a player who I think could have played since the beginning and just went through this. Tim Duncan to me is the one player that I said, I could have dropped off and he would have got 25. And he, because his game wasn't dependent on anything else other than his fundamental base. And he had the size, he had the strength, he had the know-how and he, I think you could have just dropped him off and he would have been a 24. So in saying all of that, I say this. I think Tim Duncan would be the guy to me that would be like just the greatest score. However you wanted to coach the game, because I'm taking into account how the game was taught. Like the game was taught and played and it was influenced by the coaches, right? The red Arbacks, the John Woodens, 
the, you know, Casey Jones, the, you know, Hubie Browns. That has evolved too. You know, Tim Duncan could have played for Mike D'Antoni, but I don't know if some of the other players could have played with a Mike D'Antoni. Yeah, offense. so he's versus well, he's versatile. Is to, what to, we're to, talking to, about. And the way the game was taught and the way the game was played. So Tim Duncan is my guy. Man, that's a surprising answer, but I respect it. I respect him. You can't yeah, knock yeah, him. Yeah. You can't knock, and, and because he was such a quiet person, I don't think he gets the same love in these conversations that maybe you should let us know in the discord who you think the greatest scorer of all time is you can join by hitting the link in the description right now make sure you subscribe to the channel youtube spotify apple wherever you get your podcasts from most importantly until next time get buckets